Hey, I'm Stephanie, and it's time to talk about makeup. Welcome to Makeup Monday. Today I'm going to be giving you an update on my 22 in 22 project pan. I will leave a link to the intro video and the playlist in the show notes just in case you want to catch up, but if you'd rather just jump right in, here's the basic info. This is a usage-based project. Each month I have 22 items that I'm focusing on. I want to use them 22 times within two months. The goal of the project is for me to get to know my makeup kit better because I noticed there were some products that I was kind of trying to avoid and I want to figure out if it's just because I don't know them well enough and I haven't gotten used to how I'm supposed to use them or if it's because they really just don't suit me and they would be better off in someone else's makeup kit. So let's jump right in because I had a very successful month. All 22 of my products are getting rolled out and 22 new products have to get rolled in. I'm just gonna scooch over so that there's space for me to put up pictures of the products. If you see me looking down over here, it's just because that's where my notebook is. The first product we have is the Too Faced Shimmer Shadow I was trying. I believe the shade is Silk Teddy from the Natural Eyes palette. Um, I used this a total of 58 times over the past two months, and I have to say it was one of my favorite items. It seems like it would be a really boring shadow because it's just kind of like a silky, satiny champagne color, but um, one of the reasons I put it in this project is because I do have several of those types of shades because that was my favorite. I wanted to have that in the project and I wanted to compare it with other similar shades to figure out which one is really my favorite and if I could maybe get rid of some of the doubles. However, there is no dupe for this shadow in my collection. As many similar shadows as I have, none of them hit the undertone and hit the texture just like this one does. This is probably one of my favorite shadows because it's very silky. When you have it on, on the eye, it doesn't you know, make your lid look crepey or wrinkly or heavy. It literally makes your eye look smooth like silk. So this is one of my favorite shadows of all time. And what I like about it is the champagne color is extremely neutral. If it leans a direction at all, it leans slightly golden. And that's perfect for me because my undertones are mostly neutral, but I do lean slightly golden or slightly olive-ish, somewhere in, in there. So this shade fits me perfectly. Um, and any other shade I had that came close usually had a heavier formula that was more foiled or more metallic or kind of weighed down the skin on my lid more. So this really is my ideal shade. And that's why I'm glad that I have not even hit pan yet. And that's something that I wanted to mention here because I am a baby panner. <laughs> I'm, I'm two months old, very new to panning. And one of the things I've noticed is uh, I was watching some people, you know, pan those shadows, videos and things, and they would show a picture of an eyeshadow that had, you know, been barely used. And then um, they would show the, the update a month later of the same shadow. And they'd be like, I used this shadow seven times. And there was this massive dip in it. And I was like, Oh my gosh, am I doing makeup wrong? Am I supposed to have a dip in my pan? Because I mean, 58 times and I feel like the difference isn't very dramatic. Um, but then I learned you can use eyeshadow for things like nail polish. So uh, it's showing me I have a heck of a lot to learn about this panning thing. Um, but I am happy that I got 58 uses out of my very favorite shadow and it's nowhere near being done. So... Yay! Next up is the shade Warm Taupe from the Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance Palette. This is just kind of like an all over contour shadow for me. I can use it in my hairline. I can use it on my face. I don't use it much as an eyeshadow, but who cares? We all use makeup like we want to. And I used it 47 times. The next product is super exciting because it's my very first pan in a project. It is the Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer, and I used it 54 times. It was brand new when I put it in in January, and uh, on the 54th use, it was gone. And so now I know how long it takes to pan a mini eyeshadow primer. That is a lot of product, <laughs> but it really did give me a good feel for it, and it is definitely something that I would consider repurchasing. However, I'm currently on a low buy, and I do have other things that will suffice, so I'm going to keep using those for now. Then comes my Lancome Eyebrow Pencil, which has literally been going for 18 years. 
that is a long time for an eyebrow pencil. But I have to admit, I only sharpened it two days ago. It had been in my project from the beginning of January. I've used it every single day and it didn't even need to be sharpened. So at the rate this is going, it's going to take me an entire year to pan this one, even though it's almost gone. Uh, I have to say, I really like it. I really like the color. I'm happy with it. So that's all good. But that one is getting rolled out because I did use it 58 times. The Maybelline Brow Drama Brow Gel. This one is almost gone. I used it 57 times and it's solid. I have nothing bad to say about it. Um, I'd consider repurchasing it at some point. I say that because uh, it's pretty much gone. I think I have maybe one or two more uses left because it's getting to the point where I really have to scrape the sides to get anything out. Um, it was nice, but I've got other stuff right now, so I won't be repurchasing it at the moment. It is, however, getting rolled out. Another thing that's getting rolled out is my Lancome Le Lipstique Lip Pencil in the color Ideal. Beautiful formula, beautiful color. I used it 55 times and uh, I will continue to use it, but it is no longer part of this project pan. Next up, we have a product that I still manage to be confused about, even though I've used it 50 times. Uh, it's the Patrick Ta She's Sculpted Contour and Bronze Duo. I do like it. I do think it's good. I'm just not sure if the cream color is cool enough to work as a contour for me. And so what I'd like to do is actually a head-to-head -head sort of project with this one. So I'm going to put this aside into a special box and I'm going to think about what to do. But I think I'm going to do some face-offs with some of my products and this is definitely one of them. Next up is the e.l.f. Active Lip and Cheek Palette, which is also getting rolled out. And I'm going to stop saying that now because all of them are getting rolled out. Um, this one I had actually hit my usage goal on in the first month, but I still wasn't quite sure how I felt about it. So I kept it in the project and now I've used it 35 times, and I do feel like I understand it better. The formula is a little stiffer than I like, but it leaves a very smooth finish on the skin. And for someone who has some texture, I really like that. So I've decided that I, I approve. It is a good product that I enjoy using. Next up is the Clinique Nude Pop Blush. When I first put this in the project in January, I knew that I liked the formula of these blushes, but I didn't realize how much I was going to love the color of this one because it is really subtle on me. But it's a very nude peach, and in the winter when I'm pale, it's perfect if I want to look like I'm glowy but not too glowy. It, it's not like as strong as a highlighter. It's just a lit from within glow that I love. It's a subtle color. I just feel like it's perfect for my skin tone, so I have fallen hard for this blush. I ended up using it 46 times, and uh, I'm kind of sad to see it go, but I guess that's a good sign. And I do need to get use out of some of my other blushes, so it's going to take a nap for a little bit. Next up, the It Cosmetics Loose Powder. I used this 34 times, and one of the things I mentioned in my last update was that I, I'm not a powder person, so I don't understand it, but I think I'm finally figuring out how to think about powder. Um, this month I'll be using a couple of different powders. I didn't bring any into the project, uh, as you'll see, because I want to start using all of my powders directly and do comparisons. But I'm glad this one was in here because it gave me an idea of how to think about powders and how to use them for my skin type. The same thing was for the next product, the Estee Lauder Pressed Powder, which I used 41 times. And as I mentioned in my last update, I finally figured out how to use this one and it makes me so happy. I don't think it's ideal for me because um, I feel like it's a little bit heavy still. However, I do want to use it up. Uh, it was a gift from my grandmother and I, I just have an emotional attachment to it, so I will finish it up. Next up is Charlotte Tilbury's Walk of No Shame Matte Revolution Lipstick. The reason I had this one in the project is because I feel like out of all of the reds in my collection, this would be the perfect everyday red for me. I used it a total of 24 times within two months and forcing myself to use it turned out to be a good thing because I realized it really is an easy red to wear if I want to, especially because I found that my favorite way was to simply dab it on and use it as a stain. Not only is it longer lasting that way, not only is it a little bit easier to wear, but it's also more nude, which is kind of my taste. Uh, there are some times, like especially when I'm on stage, where I want a really bright, dramatic red lip, but for every day, I feel like this really is my perfect everyday red. And so even if I never use it up because I do use it so sparingly when I do put it on, I feel like it's worth it having in my collection because 
I find that, yeah, there's probably like once a week, once every two weeks where I do want to kind of, you know, pump up the color and it's perfect for that. Next up is my lipstick queen, Queen Bee Lip Balm. Try saying that 10 times fast. This one turned out to be a hidden bombshell of a favorite. Uh, and it's because it's very sheer, but it's got kind of like a very subtle golden orange sparkle to it. And so I found that um, if I wanted to warm up a lipstick that was looking a little bit too cool toned for the look I was going for, I could just dab this over it. And not only was it really hydrating, but it would also give my lips a warm sheen. So it's like the perfect adjuster for me. I'm very glad that I put it in this project because it helped me learn that it's one of my favorites. And I used it 35 times. So all of the products up till now had been in the project since January 1st. However, on February 1st, I rolled in a bunch of new products. And so that's what we're going to get into now. I also hit my goal on all of these. So all of these are also getting rolled out. First one is the Auric Smoke Reflect in the color Entice. I used this one 23 times. It is a very almost brown olive color, which made it very easy to use, but it is kind of cool toned. So I found that I was using it more as a liner and as kind of like a contour for my brow bone, but it was beautiful because it has very subtle golden flecks in it that just make it shimmer with this really subtle sheen that I very much enjoyed. So uh, I enjoyed the cream part and the, the topper was also really interesting because it looks white in the pan, but when you put it on your eyes, it translates to this beautiful gold shine. So I ended up learning that I loved this product and I'm glad I got to know it. Next up is my JD Glow Liner. It's a multi-chrome. I don't have it with me right now. I'll put the name of it up on the screen. This is beautiful. I um, used to love, there was a formula by Urban Decay. They had these liquid liners that were very metallic. I loved them. They've been discontinued. This so far has been my best replacement for those. Um, I think you have to be very careful when you apply them. You want to make sure that you put a very thin layer on because if you try to double up on it or like reapply, it will get kind of crusty and it will crackle. So the key to this one is putting it on in a very thin layer and being very conservative with your application. If you do it that way, it lasts all day and it looks great. Uh, if you put too much on, you put too thick of a layer on, it's disaster. <laughs> but I enjoyed having a multi-chrome liner. For the most part, it looked very red, but it added a sparkle behind my lashes that I thought was pretty intriguing. So I very much enjoyed it. Next up was Too Faced Spice Spice Baby Lipstick. This is actually a discontinued lipstick that I used to wear. I've already panned one, um, but my mother had another one and she wasn't using it. So she gave it to me. Now, I haven't worn mine in a while because I used it up forever ago, so I wasn't sure if it was going to still be my style. And when I put it on the first time, I did, you know, the full application, and it was a bit much for me. It's It was very pink. Uh, but I learned that if I just dab it on, it gives my lips a beautiful juicy sheen and a touch of color. And so I use it more that way, almost as like a, a balm or a stain, but... I really do like it that way. So I'm glad it was in this project. I used it 23 times to figure it out. Next up is my Kosas Concealer, which I used 31 times. I have it in the shade four, which is not perfect for me. It's a little bit too yellow. And if I recall correctly, I seem to hear a lot of people saying that the concealers from Kosas seem to lean a little yellow. Um, so I have to look into maybe getting a different shade at some point because I have to say I really do like the formula and I can make it work. I found that it was just on some days, depending on, I don't know how ruddy I was, um, on some days I felt like I could use it under my eyes, but most days I felt like it was more fitting to kind of um, co cover the redness on my cheeks. And then I would um, do that, dab it in, press it in with a beauty blender, and then I would cover it with foundation. And I felt like, you know, just having a thin layer of foundation over it adjusted it enough so it was perfect, gave me nice coverage, made my skin look very nice. I liked the, the texture and the finish of it. So it's definitely a concealer that I would consider purchasing again, as long as I could get a, a good shade match. However, um, I, you know, I do plan to pan this one because um, Kosas, I think, is a more natural brand and they tend to use a lot less preservatives, which means it's going to go off very quickly. So I'm going to be rolling this into another project, which you'll hear about on uh, February, on March 10th. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to try to use this one up because I do I do like it. The next products I'm going to bundle together because they're all from Salt New York. I used the blush 
24 times. I used the contour 25 times, the bronzer 23 times, and the highlight 24 times. I have to say these formulas, um, the, the blush, the contour, and the bronzer seem very similar to me, and I like them all. Um, it's more of a sheer wash of color, but what I find really special about these particular cream products is the finish they give to the skin. I feel like it smoothed out my texture a little bit, and it gave it a really nice sheen, but nothing sparkly or oily or greasy looking. Like this formula really jives well with my skin type. So I very much enjoyed them. The highlight, I wasn't sure I was going to like it first because it feels just a tiny bit gritty as if there's like tiny mica particles in it that are kind of getting in the way of, of it being like a completely creamy formula. However, what I realized is, you know, is you just dip your finger in there and you just, you know, press it into wherever you want it. And it really does give a nice sheen. And yes, you can still see the, the mica particles in there if you really look for them. But that's only in like direct sunlight. And to be honest, I don't mind that. Like I don't want to wear like a glitter topper on my cheeks or anything. But these particles are so fine that it's almost like the finest fairy dust. Nothing like, you know, as dramatic as glitter. So I have to say I'm super impressed. This is the first time I've tried anything from Salt New York. And wow, like I would, I'm going to miss these when they're gone. And I do plan on using them because they are beautiful. And the last product getting rolled out is my Tarte Chrome Paint in the shade Top Yacht. I used this one 22 times and I am so glad I put this in the project. The reason I did was because I was thinking of decluttering it because I was just never reaching for it. Uh, but wow, am I glad it was in this project because I realized how wonderful it is to use. If you want really beautiful impactful shine on the lid. This looks beautiful down, right down the center of the lid and it does it without glitter and it does it without being too heavy. I usually just take the tiniest bit on my finger and then just tap it on and I feel like it just does something. It makes, you know, gives me a little bit more dimension in my eye, just makes it pop a little bit more and I'm very happy and now I know. So now I'm going to use it more often. So now we get to the exciting part, the new things I'm rolling in. I was so excited for this that I already put them all over my face today. So if you want to know what I'm wearing, we're talking about it now. <laughs> the first two items are primers. Now, if you've watched any of my other recent makeup videos, you'll know that one of the reasons I have so much makeup is because people like get stuff in subscription boxes or they buy stuff and figure out that it hasn't worked for them. And they usually pass it on to me because they know that I love playing with this stuff. So I've managed to collect like on my past trip, a kind of almost indecently large box of primers. And I really want to work my way through these. I want to figure out which ones work for me and which ones don't because the ones that work for me, I want to use them. And the ones that don't work for me, I want to pass them on because I want them all to get use. So the first two are from Bobbi Brown. It's the vitamin enriched face base and the vitamin enriched eye base. Uh, I can say after my first impression, I really like the way they smell. They smell like a little citrusy and it's very fresh and nice. The next thing is the Ulta Beauty Lip Primer. Um, this one smells like maple syrup. I love maple syrup, so I'm already a fan of this primer. I was also given the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Eye Primer, and I think it's pretty convenient because I just used up my Urban Decay one. So now I get to almost do a back-to-back -back comparison because I just used the Urban Decay one for so long, so I get to check out the Fenty Beauty one right afterwards and, and really figure out what I like better. Um, then we have the Estee Lauder Futurist Hydra Rescue. Now, I was kind of looking for something that was similar to the It Cosmetics CC Cream. I love that stuff. Um, I use it all the time, especially in the summer. But I do find that um, it really only lasts like six hours on me. And sometimes I want a good solid eight hours. So I was kind of hoping maybe this Estee Lauder Futurist Hydra Rescue Foundation might be that. So on days where I need my foundation to last longer, maybe that would be a new go-to. So we'll figure it out. This That's what this project is for. Then we have an Estee Lauder Satin Cream Blush in O2 Mauve Light. This was given to me by my grandmother. And so I want to test it out and see what I think of it. Next up is the Laura Mercier Caviar Stick in the shade Amethyst. Um, I love this thing. <laughs> like I put it on my eyes today. I was like, oh, where have you been all my life? It's great. So I think this is going to be a fun month. Uh, next up, we've got the Estee Lauder Double Wear Max. 
I can't even read my writing. The Estee Lauder Double Wear Max Coverage Camo Foundation. This one was given to me by someone else with a totally different skin tone, and they use the shade 2C5, which is cool. I'm, I lean more warm, so cool doesn't really work for me, and shade 5 also is a little too dark for me. I'm normally like a 2. But I was thinking maybe it would be a really nice contour. So I'm going to try using it as a contour cream because I don't know anybody with this particular skin tone. So um, I, I'll see if it works for me. And uh, I tried it on my nose today. So how's my nose contour looking? Okay, next up, we've got the NYX lip liner in the shade Nude Pink. Um, this is a formula I've liked a lot. What I'm unsure about is actually the shade. So uh, I am wearing it today. I feel like it might be a little bit light for me, but that's why it's here. We'll see if that's the truth. The lip color I have on today is also the next one getting rolled in. It's the Tom Ford lip color in the shade 63, Devore. And I love it. I love it a lot. Then we have an eyeliner. It's a brown liquid eyeliner by ZC. It's the Dear Autumn Air Ink Eyeliner. Um, I thought I loved this, and then I think it might have like kind of bled a little bit. Like I put it, I, I did an application and I think it might've actually bled and I don't know if, if like what it was. And so I'm putting it in here to figure out if it actually bleeds or not. I'm also rolling a contour product in this month. It is the Charlotte Tilbury contour wand in fair medium. A friend of mine gave this to me because, um, the, that little like sponge applicator ripped off and she's like, oh, you know, I really liked using it with the applicator. Yeah, I don't want to use it anymore. And I was like, throw it my way because I rip those sponge applicators off anyway. So now I'm going to try it out and see how well it works. Then we have a blush single. This was actually from a BH Cosmetics blush palette. I'm also putting in a single eyeshadow this month. It is the Estee Lauder Pure Color Eyeshadow in Iris Pearl. Um... This is actually one that's gone back and forth between my mother and I, like, repeatedly. I think it's been going back and forth for years at this point, which is also why, why it looks kind of, um, you know, a little disastrous. Um, but I'll figure out how to repress it. Um, the reason I put it in this project is because I want to figure out if I like it or not. The only reason I think I don't like it is because it's a very cool purple and I tend to do warm purples. But I have it on my eyes today and I think I can make it work. So... We'll see. That's why it's in this project. I'm also putting in a new bronzer this month. It's the Marc Jacobs Tantastic Bronzer. The last one I had in the project was the Patrick Ta one, which has like a subtle shimmer in it. And this one is matte. And so I just thought it'd be good to switch it up so I can get a feel for what I like better at this stage in my makeup life. I'm also rolling in a concealer. It is the Kaja Don't Settle Concealer. I got this in December because I've been having real problems with my under eyes lately. I've always had dark circles, but now I feel like I just always look exhausted. Like my skin also looks exhausted. That's probably just because I'm getting old. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I just wanted to see if I could like, you know, make things look a little bit more graceful and a little bit less like, you know. So um, we'll see if the Kaja Don't Settle Concealer can do that. And I also thought I'd throw in a beauty elixir. It's from Caudalie. It's basically just like a refreshing spray. I don't know that I'd use it as like a setting spray because I think it has a bunch of oils in it. I'm not sure that would necessarily be the best thing to set makeup, but you know, that's why it's in this project. I'm going to figure it out. It was one of those things that was given to me in, you know, one of the bags from my friends. So it's already half gone and I figure maybe I can even use it up this month. Um, I sprayed it on my face today and it smelled like a garden. And I liked that because it wasn't like perfume. It was like the ingredients smelled like they were just plucked from a garden and put in the bottle. And I just, I enjoyed it. So I think it'll be fun to play with. Because my Maybelline brow gel, which was in my project, last month is definitely on its last legs. I estimate maybe I have three more uses because it is so dry and it's so hard to get anything out. I could probably just pan it now, but I'm going to do the most. Um, so just because I know it's it's probably out soon, um, I decided to put in another brow product. This one is the Patrick Ta Brow Wax. And so I'll get to see how it compares. You know, I finished up my brow gel. Immediately, I will move to a wax and see what I like better. 
This month, I also decided to put a powder highlight in, and that's something I haven't really worn a lot recently, just in general. So I thought it'd be interesting to throw one in there. This one's uh, on the subtle side, so I thought it would make it easier for me to like ease back into my powder stuff. Um, it's the Laura Geller French Vanilla Baked Highlighter, so I'm excited to see how that goes. I also put a liquid highlighter in, of course. This time, I've got a tiny sample of the Becca Highlighter in Moonstone. R.I.P. Becca. This was like one of my favorite colors and one of my favorite formulas in liquid highlight. Luckily, there's a lot more of them out on the market now. Um, so, you know, once this is gone, I do have other alternatives, but I'm going to have, I, I have to say, I'm going to miss this one. <laughs> so I'm going to enjoy using it right now in this project. I also decided I would put another eyeliner in here because I have a purple cream shadow, a purple powder shadow. I have kind of like a purplish mauve blush. So I thought I would also put in a purple eyeliner. This one is from Melt. It's their all day, every day reflect eyeliner in the shade Mixtape. And as a musician, I approve of the name. <laughs> And the last product I'm rolling in this month is the Fenty Beauty Diamond Balm Triple Drip. And the reason I purchased this originally was I wanted to use these shades as eyeshadow toppers. I've been really into cream eyeshadow for like the past uh, two or three years. Um, and the idea of having like a cream topper really intrigued me, especially in these shades. However, every time I applied them, I felt like they were either giving me tons of fallout or they were creasing like crazy. So I kind of gave up playing with them. Um, and I was considering decluttering them, but I thought before I do that, I'm going to put them in this project because after all, in January, I got that lethal gel liner to work as an eyeshadow, like a cream eyeshadow, even though that was also initially creasing on me. So I'm hoping, I mean, I've got a new eyeshadow primer lined up, you know, I've got my, my project panning superpowers now. And so I'm hoping that's going to help me figure out how to use it. And if not, then hopefully I can find a new home for it somewhere where it will get the nerve it deserves. Whew, that was a long one. If you're still here, wow. Oh my gosh. Thanks for hanging out with me today. This has been fun, at least for me. I hope it's also been fun for you. Um, I try to do content like this regularly. So if you like this sort of thing, I hope you'll give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more. Other than that, I'm just really glad you were here. <laughs> I hope you have a wonderful week and that we can all remember that even stumbling can be a form of moving forward. So let's stumble in style. Thank you.